In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. When Jesus rose from the dead, and the disciples were presented with the facts and the evidence of the resurrection, just the facts and the evidence themselves weren't enough really to convince them, weren't enough really to transform them, to bring them around to believing that what had happened, uh, that what Jesus said would happen, had indeed happened. We noticed it uh, last week in the gospel, where the women who had gone to the tomb came back and reported the empty tomb to the disciples and said, we we saw an angel, and they, they said he was still alive. And what did they do in response? They huddled together in fear in the upper room until Jesus came and appeared to them. Then in this morning's gospel, we hear about that famous walk to Emmaus, a village seven miles from Jerusalem, so there's plenty of time for people to talk and discuss matters of, of great importance as they walk along the road. And what we notice in the gospel is that they too have all of the facts and all of the evidence about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They've, they've heard the eyewitness accounts. They heard the testimony of the women. They heard the testimony of the apostles. And yet, the text tells us they're still sad and confused as they walk along the road. But the first thing to observe about this is that these two disciples are on their journey together. They're sad. They're confused. They have been through a a terrible trauma with what happened to Jesus, and they're in a tremendous amount of uncertainty as to whatever became of him, really, and what's going to become of them. And yet, they are still continuing their journey, and they're continuing it, leaning on and supporting one another. And that is a reflection of the value of fellowship and community in the church and in our lives in general, that we need each other. And we need to continue walking with one another. And it's in the midst of that journey that they keep walking that Jesus comes and joins them. But they don't recognize him. Now the text doesn't tell us why. We don't know why they didn't recognize Jesus. Uh, Maybe they were just so grief stricken and downtrodden that they wouldn't have been able to recognize. Or maybe God had placed a veil over their eyes on purpose. So that Jesus could sort of get out of them what what he wanted to get out of them in regards to their conversation. But whatever the case may be, they did not recognize their risen guest as they walk along the road. But Jesus continues to walk with them. Remember that. Even though they don't recognize him or know it's him, he's still with them as they walk along their journey. So we ask questions. What are you talking about? What's happening? And they respond, that they think that he's just some foreigner who's come to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. And there were many back in those days who would come to celebrate the feast. And they can't believe that this person does not know what has happened over the past Passover weekend. The incredible uproar that was caused by the passion and death of Jesus Christ on a cross. Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who hasn't heard about these things? And Jesus goes along and says, what things? And they explain, Jesus of Nazareth, a prophet mighty in word and deed, and beloved by the people, he was killed, he was crucified. We had hoped he would be the Messiah of Israel. And the subtext there is, but apparently he isn't. But then notice they say, But furthermore, we've heard all these stories that his tomb is empty, that an angel said he's still alive, and we don't know what to make of it. Apparently, one option for them was not that he actually had risen. But anyway, at that point, Jesus enters the conversation, not just as a listener, but as a teacher. And he rebukes them. He says, you you foolish men, slow to believe what is written in the law and the prophets. 
And what he begins to do is he explains to them from their own scriptures, what we now call the Old Testament. He begins to explain to them from their scriptures that everything that had happened with regards to Jesus had been written about centuries before. That the crucifixion of Jesus and his resurrection from the dead are not some deviation from the plan that God had been laying out for centuries before. It wasn't a a contingency plan. It wasn't a plan B or anything like that. And it certainly wasn't a derailing of God's plan. But rather it was a continuation of and a fulfillment of God's plan. That all of the Old Testament scriptures pointed towards the Lord Jesus Christ and everything that happened to him. So this is nothing new, Jesus is saying. And he went through Moses and continued through all of the prophets, explaining to them how they all talk about him and point to him and to the events that have just occurred in Jerusalem. Then as they draw near to the village, they ask Jesus to stay. They still don't know who he is yet, but they just know that it's getting late. They know that it's getting late. And they know that they all need to eat. And so they ask Jesus to stay with them. Evening's at hand. The day has passed. Let's have a meal together. And then they begin to have the meal. And then Jesus does something that is familiar to them. He takes bread. He blesses bread. He breaks bread. And he gives it to them. And the text tells us that immediately... They recognized him. They recognized him from that moment. And then, of course, he vanished. I don't know why he vanished. But nonetheless, that's not important to the story. The important thing is, they recognized him in the breaking of the bread after having their hearts and minds prepared through the scriptures being unfolded to them. Now, what what, what does all this uh, mean for us today? Well, notice the shape of this conversation and encounter with Christ that takes place on the road to Emmaus. You have initially Jesus opening up the scriptures to his people. And then you have Jesus offering broken and blessed bread to his people. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? What do we do every single Sunday when we gather for worship? We listen to the word of God and have the scriptures opened up to us. The scriptures that in every book, every chapter, every verse point to the Lord Jesus Christ and his salvation, his acts and works on our behalf. Then we gather together at this table where bread is taken, blessed, broken, and given. And in that is revealed to us the love of Jesus Christ. The point of it all is that when we are on our journey, and all of us are on a journey, as Christians, in a sense, we're all on the same journey. We are journeying from this life to the next, from this earth to the new heavens and the new earth. But in the midst of that journey, Christ is present with us. Even if we don't recognize him, he is present with us. But he has given us means for him to reveal himself to us. It's not enough for us to know up here the facts of of Christianity or the doctrines of the faith or the teachings. I mean, those are all very important, but they're not sufficient. Christ has to be revealed to us. Christ has to open our eyes to see him and recognize him. And the primary means by which he does that is what we are doing right now. Gathering together as a community, listening to, hearing, and opening up the scriptures, seeing Jesus in them, and then coming to receive him in his precious body and blood. It is so easy in our culture today to think through things from a purely individualistic standpoint. It's important for us to have a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ, absolutely. But it never means that it's just about me and Jesus. We are one body, and we need one another. We need to support one another, and we need to be humble enough to lean on one another. 
And it's in the midst of that on our journey that he reveals himself to us in the scriptures and in the breaking of bread. And I pray that God may open our hearts and our eyes always to be able to see, know, and recognize his presence with us. Even if we're in the midst of sadness and confusion, like the Emmaus disciple, that we may feel his presence with us as he walks with us on the path. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Amen.